Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about Fortran and this is something very interesting because I have been programming in Fortran for a very long time but recently one of my former students actually wanted to know how they could learn Fortran. It seems they are encountering Fortran in some research problem which they are doing. There is essentially some Fortran code out there and they need to learn Fortran so that they can make any changes inside it. Now this is not just a phenomena of one person. What I actually saw and what really surprised me is that Fortran has moved to number 10 spot in the TIOBE ranking of computer languages and this is in 2024. So according to this ranking, the languages which are ranked here are number one Python, number two C, number three C++, number four Java, number five C Sharp, number six JavaScript, number seven Visual Basic, number eight Go, number nine SQL, and number 10 Fortran. So this is very surprising that a language which was actually created in 1957 is still going strong. So what has happened that Fortran has made a comeback it has essentially returned like in the Jurassic Park from its dinosaur status and so let's look at some of the aspects of this. Now some of you may not know but Fortran is actually the first high level programming language. It was essentially started at IBM. The person responsible for this was John Backus and his team essentially created this particular programming language which is something which stands for formula translation. So that's where Fortran comes from. Now, even today, if you actually are somebody who is interested in jobs in national lab or somebody who is connected to national lab, to various research institutions and even very large companies, you will often encounter Fortran code sitting out there. And there are many reasons for this. Of course, a lot of numerical and computation and scientific computation was actually done in Fortran and so what happened is that these codes stayed on for a long time people keep making changes to them and they keep running these codes because they essentially perform a lot of simulation tasks now what many Fortran codes have is that they have access to a library known as the IMSL library and this is essentially a collection of various subroutines which are out there which do a lot of numerical programming, a lot of scientific computing. So if you are somebody who is trying to do things related to scientific programming at a high speed, then Fortran is a good language to go for. And in fact, many of the world's powerful supercomputers are primarily or often running Fortran codes. Now let us look at different aspects which have led to the resurgence of this language. So number one thing is the huge need for scientific computing. And in fact, what has happened is that the coming of age of machine learning, deep learning, etc., has made scientific computing even more important. So many people actually want to link various simulation codes, various physics based modeling codes to actually the new algorithms which have come up in machine learning, in surrogate modeling, in optimization and so on. And if you are somebody who knows Fortran, who can use Fortran, this is going to be very convenient for you. Now, of course, Python can do a lot of this thing. There is NumPy, there are different libraries out there in Python such as SciPy. But most of you know that Python is a relatively slow language because it is an interpreted language. So that problem is not there in Fortran. Fortran is very fast. Now, of course, Julia is very comparable. Julia can do very well, but as I have mentioned in a video I have made previously on Julia, it's a very new language. So the legacy codes are still out there in Fortran. And so it's much easier to actually change these Fortran code than write these millions of lines of code in Julia or Python. So that's something to keep in mind. If you are somebody who is working in high performance computing, you may be using the different processors brought out by companies such as Intel, Nvidia and so on, but you are still often going to need Fortran to run these computational science and engineering type of problems, especially if you do uncertainty quantification, Monte Carlo simulations and so on, Fortran may be useful for you. Now let us look at Fortran with respect to the other programming languages. So I would say Fortran actually is a very simple programming language. It's very condensed. It's relatively 
much smaller than I would say C, C++ or certainly Python. And some of the newer languages such as C++, Java and so on have various programming features such as the OOP paradigm which make them quite complex. Now many a time you can actually do scientific programming without knowing any of these advanced new methods which have come up in the computer science domain. So what does Fortran give you? Fortran gives you various different strategies for programming. For example, you have the very famous do loop. So in Fortran, this is written as a do continue statement. You also have the while loop. And one of the advantages of Fortran is that when you are using matrices and vectors, you can essentially start from one, two, three, four, all the way to n. So unlike in some of the newer languages, you do not have to start from zero as the index there. So that is something which you will find in some of the newer languages such as Python and so on, which is a departure from the actual way we write these matrices in terms of mathematics. So in mathematics, whenever you are talking of some matrix, the i, j, th element of that particular matrix is essentially the same which you get in Fortran here. Now Fortran has some interesting features. For example, the variables which start with i, j, k, l, m, n, they are supposed to be integer variables and the remaining variables are real variables. But you can also implicitly or explicitly define these particular variables and you can not take the implicit definitions which are out there in Fortran itself. Now one of the reasons Fortran used to be criticized in the old days is because people used to use go to statements every now and then. And so if you are somebody who reads very old Fortran programs, you will go for a long distance. And then after some time you will encounter a go to 70 or a go to 50 or some statement like that. And then you will see you will go back somewhere far out in front of the computer program. Then you will go for some distance again then you may once more encounter a go-to statement. So these are very difficult to peruse and especially if you have any bugs then go-to's can be problematic. But actually you can program in Fortran without using any of these go-to statements and so on. So that's something which style is possible. That's up to you. Now there have been various versions of Fortran out there. There was Fortran 4, there was Fortran 77, there is Fortran 90 and so on. And of course, Fortran is something which is very compatible with any kind of numerical problem. So you can use any of these Fortran versions. Now, if you are somebody who is interested in Fortran programming, if you have a Linux computer, then you can use the GNU Fortran compiler. So this is essentially free if you have a Linux computer. And using this, you can essentially learn Fortran. You can write programs in Fortran. Now, there are some dedicated web page to Fortran. There are Fortran tutorials and so on. And like I mentioned before, if you are somebody who is interested in getting a job in some research lab, working on various strategic and secret projects, you may be somebody who will be required to learn Fortran down the road. Now, interestingly, the book which I used to learn Fortran a very long time ago, that is the Fortran book by Raja Raman that is still being published. I think it is in the 51st edition right now or print. It's actually this book here hope you can see this so there are of course a few books out there now with Fortran so this is one of the books which was very prevalent as far as the Indian system was concerned and so many of us essentially learned Fortran from this book computer programming in Fortran by V Rajaraman so if you are somebody who is interested in going deeper into Fortran you can certainly peruse this book and if you are very interested I can make a short tutorial on Fortran sometime. If you are interested, please leave comments on this video. So then I will put some work on that particular endeavor. I'll leave a few videos on the end screen. Make sure you look at them so that you understand more about languages such as Julia, Python and also MATLAB. Now, MATLAB of course is very useful. You all know that you use it. But do remember that MATLAB can often be very expensive and legacy codes are still written in Fortran. So if you are somebody who wants to take a particular legacy code, maybe add Monte Carlo simulation to it, maybe put it in an optimization framework, maybe do reliability based optimization or robust optimization on that, you are going to be somebody who needs the Fortran programming language.